Okay, Carter here with another Arlington Time Capsules. I'm outside the Fielder House Museum. It's right behind me, nice looking building. It's one of my favorite local hangouts. This is a two for one today because not only is the Fielder a historical landmark itself, it's also the main keeper of the city's history. It may also be the only museum in the country that owns a cemetery and a rose garden and a butterfly garden and a blacksmith shop, some of which we'll talk about later. Anyway, all very cool. You may have also heard this particular Arlington, there are 17 of them in the country, is also home to the Dallas Cowboys, the Texas Rangers, the original Six Flags over Texas, and Hurricane Harbor. It's a town where there's a lot to do. Well, there's much more to see, you can bet. One example being this little museum tucked away at the corner of Abram Street and Field Road. It's a funky, all local museum with a terrific photograph collection. There's a mix of extremely local exhibits and an eclectic permanent collection that includes everything from a turn of the century barbershop to a real country doctor's office. Come up on the porch, I'll tell you a little bit more. Maybe you'll decide to visit someday. Let's go, shall we? I love lemonade and porches. I'm especially partial to covered porches like this one, elevated so that one can keep up with what the neighbors are up to. Not that I'm the inquisitive type. I wonder why they didn't invite me to that. Anyway, this house has another big porch on the lower floor then three more oversized covered porches upstairs. Pretty handy since this house was built maybe 106 years ago before air conditioning. So a screened in porch up high to catch a Texas breeze for a nighttime snooze is definitely a good thing. In fact, uh, it's mighty comfortable right here. Did I mention the Fielder House has a historical marker or two? I did, didn't I? I'll be back, but here's a little more about the couple who built the house and details about the architecture of the house itself. In the meantime, I'll maybe take a little siesta myself as soon as I figure out what those people are up to. Okay, okay, you caught me. Welcome to the Fielder House Museum. It was a residence when built in 1914 by prominent banker, farmer, entrepreneur, and attorney James Park Fielder and his wife Maddie. The house remains impressive today but it was even more so in 1914 when the area's population was about 2,100 people, far from the 400,000 we have today. It was quickly dubbed the little house on the hill. This little farm here was only 205 acres, though Fielder also had a much larger farm, 3,000 acres in nearby Johnson County. In 1914, the Fielder House was easily the most magnificent home in the area and was considered a modern marvel. The home had running water, inside bathrooms, its own ice house, state-of-the-art telephone, as well as the newfangled electricity. Though it was said that James Fielder didn't want electricity, his wife Maddie, however, did, so of course the house was electrified. The inner urban and electric trolley that ran in front of the house uh, between Dallas and Fort Worth. 30 minutes to either city, and that was uh, very swift compared to the horse and buggy of the day. As for James Fielder himself, he was big with the Methodist. He was one of the founders of SMU, Southern Methodist University, and also on the board of what is now the 50,000 student University of Texas at Arlington though back then it was called Grubbs Vocational College. In fact, part of UTA today is located on some of the original farm property to the south. He was also on the Arlington City Council and briefly served as Arlington's mayor for a short period of time. About what you'd expect from the guy with the snazziest house in town. Man, I love buggies. We just need a horse. We'd take this thing for a ride. James Park Fielder was a fan of a rising architect, Frank Lloyd Wright, as well as another architect, Lewis Sullivan. In particular, Fielder loved the clean lines, the multiple porches, the minimalist external ornamentation, and the flowing rooms of what was called Prairie Home Architecture. This house is a classic example of Prairie Home Architecture. 
The home eventually passed into the hands of new owners with the passing of James in 1949 and then Maddie a year later. The home was eventually virtually surrounded and made into an urban island completely uh, surrounded by streets when the city expanded Field Road. The city purchased the property and there was even discussion about demolishing the house. Local citizens rallied to save it and it became a museum in 1980. A lot has happened to the house on the hill since then. But before we get into that, let's talk about something else important. Butterflies. Pleasant, isn't it? It's hard to believe this is right next to a busy roadway that you're probably hearing in the background. I'm in the butterfly garden at the Fielder House Museum, which you should also visit someday. This particular little garden is considered a national prototype, one widely emulated. It's all organic, no chemical pesticides at all. It's a cooperative, all volunteer project of the Arlington Organic Gardening Club and Cross Timbers Master, uh, Master Naturalist. The garden is made up of 100% Texas native plants selected to host and provide nectar and other food for as many local caterpillars and butterflies as possible. This means everything growing here is edible. So if you're a butterfly or a caterpillar with ambitions to become a butterfly, this whole garden is like a giant buffet line. It turns out that only about 2% of eggs laid by butterflies reach adulthood because of predators, diseases, insecticides, and in this urban world of ours, lack of habitat. To counter that, the groups that run this garden actually raise butterflies indoor and release them right here. So you're likely to see any number of butterflies anytime you drop by, particularly in the warm season. Though this garden provides sustenance for all kinds of butterflies, there's a lot of emphasis on queen butterflies. Uh, they look like this and monarch butterflies. Both the queen and monarch depend on plants from the milkweed family on which the butterflies lay their eggs. So this entire garden is just like a big lunch bucket for them. What do you say we go back into the museum? Every city needs a connection to its past because after all it's our history that shapes our future. The Arlington Historical Society wanted this museum to be a true community resource for its exhibitions to reflect in particular the life in a Texas community from 1900 to 2000 and to be representative of everyone and every demographic that made Arlington the booming city that it is today. Arlington's history is colorful with an ever-changing brand. Once it was raw frontier, then a railroad town, then a farming community. Its history includes battles with Native Americans, mineral wells, gunfights on Main Street, wide open gambling in the 30s and 40s, cotton gins and saloons, electric trolleys, and a considerable suburban sprawl. It also had a sort of second coming as an industrial city with the arrival of the General Motors plant. And a third life as one of Texas' most successful tourism cities. Yet it is also a college town with two universities and a community college. By evolution and design, this is a working museum dedicated to collecting, preserving, and interpreting our local and county historical artifacts. We have a permanent collection, mostly 1890 to 1950, and a lot of space for changing exhibits, and our archives include a massive collection of local historical photos. Photography that chronicles the city's past is a big part of what we do. These include the works of photographers Paul Knudsen, Truman Bryce, and A.J. Mahaney, and a, a wonderful collection of 1940s postcards from the Charles Johnson Studio. Our goal is to provide eight to 10 exhibits a year, always something new, Sometimes the exhibits, like the Eastern Star Time Capsule, are small, occupying just a corner of the museum. Others, like a tribute to the city's World War II veterans, or a history of the local black community, or recognizing the city's horse racing days, may occupy several rooms. Still other exhibits focus on individuals with strong local ties, like actor Morgan Woodward, or mayor and philanthropist Tom Vandergriff. The exhibits are all personal, really a labor of love, and an ongoing link to the city's past with the community of today. This recreation of Dr. Zach Bobo's patient room will make you nostalgic if you're a little older. Bobo's practice ran for 65 years from 1931 to 1987. He was still seeing patients when he was 90. Bobo was stopped one night by a gangster man to steal his car. When the gangster saw a doctor's bag, he asked Bobo, where are you going? Bobo's answer was to deliver a baby. The gangster told him, go on, Doc, I'll catch the next one. 
That's how Bobo met Clyde Barra, a Bonnie and Clyde fame. Over more than half a century, Bobo delivered more than 1,000 Bobo babies, practically a clan in itself. Bobo prospered in Arlington, but invested much of it in funding scholarships, hundreds of them, to his beloved alma mater, Baylor. When he died, his memory was such that for two months, at his Rotary Club, no one was sitting in his usual chair, and that was by a visitor who didn't know any better. When you stop by, maybe we'll let you try out Dr. Bobo's 65-year-old metabulator, if we can figure out how to turn it on. Hey, Eastern Star Time Capsule. Spinning wheel behind me. Been a while since I've worked one of those. Next time you're in town, most certainly check out the Titan Roller Coaster at Six Flags, or a Rangers game, or a Cowboys game, or a Dallas Wings women's pro basketball game, or maybe all three. Maybe you can zip up and down the Geronimo water slide at Hurricane Harbor way too many times. Anyway, make sure and schedule an excursion while you're at it to the Fielder House Museum. It'll be a historical adventure.